meditation. Um, our speaker today uh, is Reverend Marsha, and uh, she always gives very informative talks. Reverend Marsha. Thank you, Reverend Michael, and thank you, Aaron, for that meditation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I've had an interesting week. Have you had an interesting week? (laughs) The topic for today seems very fitting for this week. The topic is the mind power of elimination. And elimination is one of your 12 mind powers. In order to help understand how the mind power of elimination works, I found it helpful to think about what the physical function of elimination is actually all about. We ingest food and drink into our bodies in order to sustain ourselves and keep our bodies functioning. Our bodies then utilize that food and what's no longer needed is eliminated. But what happens to you if you don't physically eliminate freely Your body is holding on to something that's no longer serving you well. You can get bloated and uncomfortable. And then other physical issues can begin to bother you as well. And what if you eliminate too freely? You can get exhausted and weak. And there's more to physical elimination. There's also tears. And how about sweat? Um, You also shed skin cells. What happens if you have no tears? Your eyes become dry and irritated. You need to sweat to cool your body down, and if you sweat too much, that's a whole other topic. (laughs) And your breath. You breathe in what plants eliminate, and what you breathe out is taken in by the plants. So the extent that your body utilizes physical elimination is actually a lot more extensive than some people may consider how do we use this knowledge of our bodily functions and apply it to our daily lives what can you do to help your life flow with more ease what can you do to bring about more happiness health and wealth into your life no matter what's happening around you our lives are full of experiences We think about those experiences. We talk about those experiences. We interact with people who share our experiences, who we share our experiences with in many different places. Through our experiences, we learn how to define our world. Our experiences tend to let us know how to react based on how we've acted or seen others react in the past. And sometimes what we've Learn to tolerate or not tolerate can cause conflict in relationships with people in our lives or within ourselves. The mind power of elimination is all about letting go of something and replacing it with something else. The challenge is learning how to do that in the most effective way possible. If you want something different, then it makes sense that you're talking about changing something. In order to change to something new, then it makes sense that you're choosing to let go of something else. The challenge is learning to let go of those things that are no longer serving us well, or may never have served us well, and replace with things that are for our highest and best good. Most of us would like to improve something in our lives. I really don't know of anybody who would say that they wouldn't want anything at all to be different. And I'm not just talking about people being unhappy with their lives. Um, Wanting improvement applies to people who are very happy as well as people who may not be. Most of us want to learn and grow and change in some way or another. If you want something different in your life, then... What you're, than what you're experiencing right now, then it only makes sense that you would need to do something different in order to initiate that change. You would need to eliminate 
let go of something and then consciously replace it with something else. And change takes effort of some, some sort. When I first started studying here at the chapel, I actually had a real issue with the topic of elimination. I was thinking that if I have a problem with someone in my life, I don't want to just eliminate them from my life in order to move forward. Well, I realized that I came here to the chapel with my own definition of elimination that came from my own past experiences. And I hadn't really allowed myself to open to a more balanced way of defining the process. I found that it would serve me better if I allowed myself to open up to new definitions for some of the things that I previously thought to be true. Using the power of elimination doesn't mean getting rid of everything. We use wisdom and discernment to make balanced, harmonious decisions for ourselves. Something that can seem challenging is figuring out how to initiate change. A lot of times you can get so used to doing things that are actually no longer serving you well that the idea of changing yourself doesn't even come to mind. And many times people feel that it's really the other people in their life that needs to change. So they wait for other people in their lives to change to accommodate them and make them happy. And when that doesn't work, they quite often eliminate that person from their life. Then they go about finding someone else to replace that person. And very often, the result is getting into a similar relationship or a similar situation with the same issues and wondering why all relationships turn out so badly. There's something about the study of metaphysics that's made a tremendous impact on me. Metaphysicians learn to take responsibility for their own lives. We learn that we're the creators. We're the ones that think in our minds. A prayer that we hear often at the beginning of Sunday service or classes here at the chapel generally contains words that ask to better understand ourselves so that when we meet those on our path, we'll have a much better understanding of them. Understanding and working on self is the key. Initiating change comes from within you. You are creators. And because you're the ones who think in your minds, you can eliminate a thought pattern and replace it with a different thought pattern. The great thing about working with the mind power of elimination is that when you eliminate, you're immediately replacing with something else. So when you consciously decide to change a thought pattern, you can consciously decide what to replace it with. This one step of changing a thought pattern can initiate a change that affects other thought patterns. And then it can initiate a change in words that are said. Changing words can initiate a change in how people react to you and how you react to them. And as a result, sometimes an entire relationship can change just by starting off with a small change in your own thought patterns. Can you imagine just how powerful that can be? By changing yourself, you can actually change your life and the quality of your relationships. I used to argue a lot, and uh, mostly with my husband. <laughs> and I felt like there were two ways for everything. There was the right way and there was the wrong way. So if I had an opinion about something, well, that must be the right way. So one day I decided I didn't like the way that arguing felt. So I started to accept the thought that there are many right ways that work for different people. Amazing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> then I decided to start saying, I understand how you feel that way. That's interesting. I feel this other way because of this or that. And I found that I had more conversations instead of arguments. And I started learning more. And I enjoyed people more. 
Elimination is a process. It's a healthy process. And you have a choice to create something to replace that which no longer serves you well. Each day as we move through life, we experience and learn through our thoughts, words, and actions. If we're wise, we learn to eliminate in a healthy manner. We learn to allow negative thoughts, words, and actions to be eliminated and to be replaced by positive thoughts, words, and actions. It sounds really simple, and it actually is. The thing that happens, though, is that when life is handing you one of those big bumps in the road, you can have very big, powerful emotions of anxiety and anger and fear. It's at those tough times that the tendency can be that as you're eliminating, you might start replacing with the same thing. If you keep thinking the same negative thoughts, words, and actions, you can get stuck. But when you're aware of the law of cause and effect, and that you have your mind powers that are all working simultaneously within you, then that awareness can help you to remember to change your focus from negative to positive. And then perhaps you can move through those tough times a little bit faster than maybe you did in the past. With all the happenings in our world these days, maintaining that positive focus is even more important. Going shopping for groceries creates a different kind of emotion for me than I've ever experienced before in a grocery store. But the trick is to stay focused on what you want to create. So for me, I like to say, everything I need is available to me. And I have all the space I need. And I love feeling happy and healthy. Recently, I was at a workshop and I learned a new technique that I'd like to share with you. Uh, recognizing and changing the way you talk inside of yourself, inside of your head, is the first step in creation. Thoughts become words and words become action. So changing your thought pattern is a huge step toward change. In the past, I've worked on talking to myself in a loving way in the mirror. And that can be challenging at first <laughs> to speak lovingly to yourself in the mirror. But after a while, that practice becomes really empowering. Well, this technique is a little bit different than mirroring, but I find it to be empowering as well. Think of a term of endearment for yourself an endearment term that you might use towards someone else or that someone may have used toward you at some point in time. It took me a while to think about that, but then I thought of a word that my mom used to use for me. She would always refer to me by saying, Marsha, darling. <laughs> so I tried it. <laughs> I would say something inside of myself like, Marsha, darling, I know you can figure this out. <laughs> or, Marsha, darling, I know you can get your exercises done right now. <laughs> At first, it felt really strange to refer to myself in that kind of a loving way. It's really personal but it actually feels really good now. I, I, I do it a lot now. It's almost like becoming my own best friend. It's another way to encourage myself to treat myself well. And lately, as I navigate my way through life and make healthy decisions for myself, it feels nice to give myself a little bit of encouragement. It feels strange to me these days to go in a store and see empty shelves. It feels strange to me right now to not hug people or to maintain a bit more distance. But what I focus on is not the avoidance. I focus on what I'm creating. I'm creating health habits 
that I feel are good for me right now. Doing this is a change of habit. I'm eliminating one habit and replacing it with another one that I feel is healthier for me at this moment. And I can say inside of myself, Marsha, darling, <laughs> that's a great idea. <clears throat> we each have our own way of creating in the way that we feel is for our highest and best good. And finding that best way is a personal choice. See if you can come up with your own term of endearment for yourself and create a loving conversation within yourself to find your own best way. The study of metaphysics teaches that life can be upside down and backwards. The time that it's most important to say happy things is when we're faced with sadness. The time to say I'm lovable is when I don't necessarily feel that I am. The time to say I'm peaceful is when I don't really feel at peace. The time to tell myself that I'm confident is when I might be unsure. And to most people this would not make any sense. But it does make sense when we know that the laws of the universe tell us so. We know that to replace confusion with confusion brings confusion. <laughs> so to replace confusion with confidence is the alternative. And it sure seems a lot nicer than the opposite. Focus on what you're creating, not what you're eliminating. So the next time you're wanting to create change, think to yourself, I eliminate with ease that which no longer serves me, and I immediately replace with fresh new thoughts, words, and actions that are for my highest and best today. Create something wonderful for yourself and just see what a difference your awareness and a healthy use of the mind power of elimination can make in your life. God bless you. Thank you.